Welcome to Fargo, North Dakota. This might not be the capital, but it is the most populous city in North Dakota, and I'm gonna show you around. That's the one. That's, that's the it. One. That's, that's the same thing. So one of the first recommendations I've had is for coffee, so we're going to Youngblood. All right, now that we have our coffee, I wanna bring you guys up to speed. I'm Michael, I'm a travel vlogger, and this is my first time in Fargo, North Dakota. And another friend of mine, Michael, who went to university here, he raves about Fargo and wanted to make sure I got to experience true Fargo, North Dakota. So he connected me, us, essentially, with the Kilbourne Group, which is revitalizing the downtown core. They are renovating old buildings and trying to bring the spirit of Fargo back to the downtown core here. And we're about to go meet with Adrian, who's gonna show us one of the most iconic buildings in Fargo called the Black Building. Uh, but also this afternoon, we're gonna check out a number of other places. So hang tight, but first, let's go meet Adrian. <laughs> so this is an Art Deco building that was built in 1930 wow. by George Mumford Black and the lobby got a lot of attention. You, you can imagine back in 1930 there wasn't a lot of um, ornate beauty yet right. in building and so you can see he brought in Art Deco details and the ironwork and in the in the elevator doors wow. and the entire floor is continuous terrazzo, which is another thing that we don't see much wow. anymore. I'll tell you a quick story about the building. Okay, uh, George Mumford Black his father, Leslie, was an immigrant from Ireland, and he settled in Kansas in the 1960s, or 1860s, excuse me, and they started as merchants. They had stores, and they were very successful and decided they would like to have a chain of black stores and took a train trip to try to find where their next store should be. And they weren't even planning to stop in Fargo, but they needed to stop in Fargo to get on the train to go to Minneapolis. And when they, when George Black got off the train and saw what was happening in Fargo, he wrote to his dad and said, this is it, this is where we have to be. There, there's lots of commerce, the people are out shopping, people are happy, they're nice to each other, we've got to put our store here. So they did, they opened up the Black store in 1912. So just a couple wow. months after his first stop here and built that store and grew it on this spot, grew it over the years. And then he was out in New York City during the stock market crash yeah. and saw the stock market crash. And he ended up coming back to Fargo and deciding to sell the black store to Sears because Sears was expanding its footprint and wanted a Fargo presence. So he sells this black store to Sears along with the name Black and then uses the proceeds to build this. And so that's how the black building came to be. And Sears was the tenant on the first lower and mezzanine floors of the building. They were the anchor tenant. Wow. And upstairs was all office space. Was this the tallest building in town when it was built? It was the tallest building in North Dakota when it was built. Wow. It was the tallest building until the uh, North Dakota State Capitol was built in 1934, so okay. a couple of years later. Yeah. Wow. So I wanted to show you this to see the, what it looks looked like before we took all the walls out. Right, look at these doors. I just, this is so classic, those yes. stained glass windows, the little number at the top, dark, dark wood bronze or goldish colored round door handles. So this wow. is what the building looks like without all of the offices in it. This building is very special in downtown Fargo to have windows on all four sides of the building because it's tall and there's not a building right next to it that blocks. You know, all right. these other buildings are wonderful and they have another Two one right next to it. Two sets of windows, yeah, front and back only. Yes, so this building is just flooded with light when you take all of the There's so many windows and they're so large. There's 280 windows I believe, <laughs> in the building. There's a stat. Yep, and they were, they're all original to the building, so they're all being replaced. Wow, look and at the And you can see there's maple, uh, marble, marble base. And wow. We took the marble baseboard off the bottom and are cleaning it up and put that all back on. So a service elevator, still functional. Being, being repaired, yeah, you said? being replaced. Being replaced yeah. with yeah. The, the modern one. I don't think I've ever looked down an elevator shaft before. <laughs> ah, that's good. That's enough. That's the actual blueprints of the building. Oh. And the wallpaper. So that's the hand-drawn architectural drawings. 
Wow, hand drawn, yeah. Gosh, those were the days. Converted some of the old radiators to hold the table. Oh, this, I'm oh, guessing, is a railing yeah, from, from some right. element. We found an entire room full of these giant leather bound ledgers. Wow. And it's all handwritten ledgers dating back to, you know, the the Black's store when it opened in 1912, so. Wow, that's incredible. We, we kept one to make this little photo book, but then we donated the rest of them to the North Dakota State University archives. Right. I am very impressed at how you guys have taken this amazing old building, but you're really maintaining the heritage, the authentic original feel of it, keeping things like this, yeah. reusing some of the older items as in new ways as tables and whatnot, and you know, showcasing the blueprints and as a wallpaper. It's, uh, yeah, it, it must be really proud to be are you Fargoans? Yes, we're Fargoans. As a Fargoan. <laughs> Downtown to, Fargoans. <laughs> to, to keep this. Anyway, I think that's great. Yeah, that's really important to Kilmore Group. That's really why we exist. Do I get to okay. tell you a little bit about us? Yeah, too? please, please. So we were founded by Doug Burgum, the governor of North Dakota right, right now. And the reason he started this company is because he would see the pain that his mom felt when a building was torn down. Mm -hmm. And so he just couldn't... The first building that he had the chance to take on was the Renaissance Hall building okay. in downtown Fargo. And it was days away from a wrecking ball. And he just couldn't bear it. And he saved it. And he saved it. And now it's the architect school for North Dakota State University. He saved it. He um, donated money to renovate it. He got to know a lot about renovating old sure. buildings. <laughs> and donate the building to the school then. Oh, very cool. And now, a couple of years later, we he incorporates Kilborn Group. And now he has a team of 40 people down here that have the same passion for old buildings. And... In this downtown Fargo neighborhood. Yeah, it's not just the black building, it's a number of buildings. It's a number of buildings. We have a number of buildings just right in this crossing of Broadway and 2nd Avenue North yeah. that we're taking care of. Revitalizing the downtown neighborhood. Of course, you have to take these old buildings and make them compatible with today's technology, more outlets, you know, air conditioning, air conditioning <laughs> and, and everything else. But yeah. uh, you are still really keeping the feel of the old building. And we I are. Here's a fun example that. of that. So this is a rendering of what the building will look like when it's all done. Yeah. And this sign used to say Sears. Yeah. And of course they left in the early 70s, but we're, we redesigned a sign that is in the same shape and we're gonna put the name black back on the side of the building. Very cool. Yes. Oh, nice. It's the black building, you gotta jiggle. Keep eyes on that door. so much for having me up here, Adrian. Yes, it's my it pleasure. Really a pleasure. It's a chance to come to the roof, I'll take it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, so we're getting thirsty. I asked where a good place to go for a drink is. I was recommended to a brand new cidery in town. In fact, it's North Dakota's first cidery, but it also is in a fully refurbished 100-year-old horse stable. This farm contract from 1904 in that um, east wall over there, just like wow. in the wall. Yeah, and it's actually from the farm from the um, first mayor in Fargo, his farm. First mayor. Yeah, this is what the inside looked like. We did, we gutted it. Yeah. Down to the concrete, and then that was the first wall that went up. So we yeah, we literally did everything except for the plumbing and electrical. And we wanted something that was older, something that wasn't new because we just like older stuff has right. more character yeah. and something that was affordable. Yes. So we were able, it took us about a year to reach an agreement with Kilborn to let us do the work. So we were able to afford a cheaper rent. They were able to benefit because otherwise the building would have been, so. it would have been too expensive to redo it. So we just gotten pulled those down. So wow. we were able to preserve it. All of this wood is original to the building, which she'll tell you later. I was too, just going to ask how much of it is. All of this wood, claimed or... I denailed and sanded myself. No, <laughs> all, you know in the whole it. building. I tell everyone, like, I just want you all to know, I did it. <laughs> These, <laughs> These sands, yeah. yeah, I have like permanent scars. So this is the wood that the exterior siding was nailed to, um, and so each piece of wood had like 20 to 30 nails in each, uh, and so we had to take all the nails out, sand it down, and then this smaller width is actually the secondary ceiling turned upside down. Guys, this is Ethan, owner and founder here of Wild Terra, along with Breeze. 
Breezy. 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 <laughs> Sorry. This is it pretty much for production for cider for now. Wow. Uh, so right now we're getting juice from Pacific Northwest and that allows us to get juice whenever we want, ferment whenever we want, do it year round. And I'll continue to do that. But this fall, the focus is going to totally shift and we're going to be looking for any and every North Dakota apple we can find. Yeah. So whether that's your neighbor's backyard or a farmer has a shelter belt of some apple trees or some people have already contacted us and said that they planted trees to attract deer on their hunting land and they're not really using the apples very much and so it's kind of like going to be a mix of where we find them like all over the place oh wow you got tuesday nights movie nights you guys stick around that's our movie night so we turn all the furniture kind of movie theater style we got a 110 inch projector screen wow shut out the popcorn maker yeah, 18 foot shuffleboard. That's you don't see that. That's in town very often beautiful. This is the original flooring that was in here. We took it out one board at a time, My. stored it, brought it back, sanded it, reinstalled it. Gosh, it's a it's what, what do they call that? A work of love or something like that? This <laughs> is work of something. <laughs> Just a lot of work. <laughs> Just a lot of work. Yeah. How many different ciders do you have at the moment? At the moment. We have 20 taps, two are local craft beer, so the other 18 rotate mostly of cider, but we do have a couple meads that find their way on tap oh, every cool. once in a while. Um, we have other meads in bottle, we have a full wine list as well. Wow. Um, but yeah, the cider is the is the focus, so there's any time between, you know, about 18 to 20, 25 ciders, because we also carry some in bottle and can. All right, where to next? Oh my gosh, thank you. I'm the happiest I've ever been. In this alleyway in Fargo is the next best thing to Disneyland, the second happiest place on earth, this scoops and dough cookie dough shop. I'm a huge cookie dough fan. Obviously they have like M&M's cookie dough, cookies and cream, yada yada. I had to get traditional. Um, and when they say, would you like ice cream on top? It's a mandatory yes, so I'm pretty stoked. This is a must see. Thank you, Fargo. Oh my. This ice cream is really good. There's oh, the cookie dough. What did you get? Uh, really good. Cookie dough ice cream, blueberry uh, cobbler uh, ice cream with peanut butter cups and peanuts on top and whipped cream. Yum. Uh, Pirate Moody. Pirate Moody. <laughs> Pirate's bounty, but. Uh. Arr. Summer's here is when they put the swinging cowboy doors back up. Excellent. And they are. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. So this is a recommended stop here, no. Rooter's Bar. I'm told when you come to Rooter's, you have to get the Rooter's root beer, which is an alcoholic root beer. There's no actual root beer in a Rooter's root beer. Though. Really, no root beer in it. It's just flavored like a root beer. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. I haven't had a root beer in so long. I, don't, I haven't either. Well, that's another Fargo landmark off the list. I know you're not going to run and put it at the top of your tourist destination, but if you happen to be in the area, make a slight detour if you have to, to come see Fargo for a day or two. Trust me, it's worth it. All right, I'm going to leave it here. I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. So if you haven't already, subscribe. You can do that by clicking on my face right there. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. It's, it's always fun with you.